Welcome to Bronte Creek Provincial Park in the city of Oakville. If you're looking for some beautiful hiking trails and a ton of family activities to do, this may be the park for you. Join us. Let's get to it. We are Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season four of our park reviews. We hope this helps you when deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Thanks for coming along, Camping with the Coles. Here we are on our last camping trip of the season. We're on our way to Bronte Creek Provincial Park. It's the closest park to where we live, yet we've never been there before. Nope. It's only 72 kilometers from our home, um, and it's right in the city of Oakville. So uh, I don't think we've ever been to a park that's been in a city like that. So we're gonna check it out. See you there. Uh -huh. So when we were uh, at Pancake Bay this summer, one of our viewers who we met at Pancake Bay, uh, Ian carved this himself and gave this to us, which was awesome. We thought we'd bring him on our final trip of the season for Thanksgiving. We don't have a name for him yet. But he's our little Thanksgiving mascot. Yeah, so he's gonna join us in our festivities this weekend. Thanks, Ian. If you have a name for him, please put it in the comments below. We'd like to give an eight. Yeah. Okay, so we just came in and we're filling it we had to do a, like a almost a 360 around the registration desk to fill up right there and then we will drive around again and go to the right and drive all the way around we're at 132 so i don't know if we go this way or this way but we are right there bronte creek provincial park is in the city of oakville bronte creek runs through the park and empties into lake ontario four kilometers away this 6.4 square kilometer park provides a family camping experience that can accommodate tents to large RVs. Here we are at the dump station. Um, not a fan. It's just single file. There is the black tank dump flush and the clean fill up straight ahead. So you're just basically stuck in the one lineup. We had somebody in front of us for the longest time and it's like a Thursday morning. The good thing is the black hose is threaded as the uh, fill hose. At the water fill station right now, uh, I thought it was kind of an unusual setup. I've never seen a little house like this over the water. And then I'm uh, looking in and I'm like, what is with all these electrical panels here? And like, I couldn't figure it out. And I see there's one light, but I didn't know why they had all these electrical panels. And then I looked and saw that it has this all around there. So it's heating coils to go around the, uh, the pipe. So all the way down there, it's heated so that the pipes don't freeze. So you can uh, do this well into the uh, cold weather. So that's pretty good. Bronte Creek Provincial Park is split in two with two separate entrances. There's the camping area and the day use area. They are separated by a ravine in Bronte Creek. There are four campground loops with a total of 148 electric sites and no non-electric sites. Prairie Campground has 36 electric sites. Savannah Campground has 39 electric sites and three yurts. Woodland Campground has 36 electric sites. Ravine Campground has 37 electric sites. Time to check out the park.
there are three yurts and they're all in the Savannah campground. They each come with a fire pit, picnic table, barbecue, plugged into natural gas, and a patio. There are nine mini comfort stations in the day use area with flush toilets. There are two comfort stations, one in uh, Prairie and Savannah campground, the other Woodland and Ravine campground. Each of them has flush toilets, showers, laundry facilities. They are barrier free and the laundry facilities are $2.50 each for the washer and dryer. And you can get a bonus, a leg workout. At the showers. Ugh. There are two children's playgrounds between Prairie and Savannah campgrounds and between Woodland and Ravine campgrounds. And there's one in the day use area. There's one cute amphitheater. It has uh, stadium, mini stadium seating and backrest at the top row. There are two leash free dog trails. In the campground, there's a 1.4 kilometer trail, and in the day use area, there's a 2 kilometer trail. At the campground leash free dog trail, there's a mini comfort station as well as a tap and a water dish for the dogs to get a drink. There's a park store, but it closes at Labor Day, so it's not open right now. There's one outdoor pool. It's touted to be one of the biggest outdoor pools in all of Canada at 1.8 acres. There is an additional fee for it. The pool has been closed for all of 2022 season. We're unsure when it's going to open again. There's an 18 hole professional disc golf course. If you just want to try it out, you can borrow some discs from the lending library at the first hole. There's 10 hiking trails ranging from 500 meters to 2.4 kilometers. Cell service here for Bell, Telus, Kudo, and Virgin Mobile. Top notch, as expected, being in the middle of a city. Uh, I expect the other carriers too. Over in the day use area, there's two visitor centers. One is called the Interpretive Center, and it's the Spruce Lane Farmhouse. Then there's the Nature Center, where guests can learn about glaciers and wildlife. And it's the place to meet for spirit walks and coyote howls. And there's a farm for the kids with live animals. And there's a playground or play structure inside that big red barn behind us. Lots of fun for the little ones, 10 and under. Yep. There's two entrances to Bronte Creek Provincial Park. There's the day use entrance, which is on Burl Oak Drive in Oakville. And there's the camping entrance on Middle Road West in Oakville. If you want to go from day use to camping or camping to day use, you have to go outside of the park, drive around seven kilometers, even heading onto the QEW, and uh, then coming in the next exit. You can't get from one side to the other side of the park because the ravine and creek is in the way. When you're walking the outskirts of the camping area, you can definitely tell you're not up north in wilderness country. You're in the middle of a city. Houses line the edge of this park. But when you're hiking along one of the trails, such as the ravine trail, you would think you're in the middle of nowhere. see that beaver dam down there but uh, there's some salmon splashing trying to get up and over the beaver dam So we just got back from a bike ride. We were following some of the trails and then we got completely lost on it trails. It was well worth getting lost. That was the best getting lost ever. Yeah, it was amazing. It was so beautiful. We thought Algonquin was amazing. But where we were at Algonquin, we were in a, uh, a white pine forest. This is all deciduous trees, uh, a lot of maple. They're all in full color right mm -hmm. now. We went along a trail, which I believe is called the Ravine Trail, but it's not on the map of the park and uh, wow, some stunning views along that trail. We were meant to stumble on that one accidentally. And Not we even goodness. looked down in the water and saw the salmon splashing yeah, as they're cool. trying to swim upstream. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, well worth it. Big shock, love it so far. Mm -hmm. This is my eldest. Hi. She's the, the author. Allie's here. Ryan drove. Hello. 
So we got the whole family here for this Thanksgiving weekend. We got Allie here, Cheryl, of course, Ryan, Amy, and Eric. We're all together. And where's Kingston? Oh, where's Kingston? There he is. We're on the Leash Free Trail in the campground area. That's 1.4 kilometers. Enjoying this beautiful walk along the ravine. There isn't really any vault toilets in this uh, park. There's just mini comfort stations and they're very nice. They have everything you need, flush toilets, mirror, uh, soap, water, blow dryer, sensor lights, hooks. Yeah, so you can't really say anything bad about them. So I'm gonna give them a flower. Hi, Beans. Oh. Hi, Beans. Do you have dad's Good shoe? Morning. Steven, I came just in time. Bacon. Ooh, that looks good. Bacon. We went uh, down to the dog trail? Yes. So Cheryl, more of her friends got a clam shelter. Yeah, it's big. So Dilly and Patty got one. Now Steven and Ingrid have one. And a few of our viewers have also purchased. Yeah, we got to get a clam yes. shelter. Yes. These things are amazing. We brought our dining tent with us on this trip. I'll yeah. show it to you. It took us about 15 minutes to set up <laughs> and the two of us, and it was a bit of a job. It's starting to leak a bit. This thing, 30, 45 seconds, and it's set up with one person. Yes. Oh, the sun just came out. Oh, that's a good thing. It's it a likes sun the clam shines too. down on the clam. <laughs> When you're at the day use area, you can get on your phone and install an app called Adventure Lab, and it is a GPS guided tour of the day use area. the Spruce Lane Farmhouse from 1899. During the summer months, they'll have staff members in period costumes inside the house and around, and you can talk to them. They'll let you know about how life was like in the early 1900s. Are you kidding me? That was for par. <laughs> and then in first place, 
Oh yeah. yeah. So the scores, I never said the scores. Allie, 51. Celia, 50. Ryan, 49. <laughs> Lila, 47. <laughs> ben, 39. Oh, oh good job. Nice, nice job. job. Like that was fun. We got to do a group shot with her, with her discs. And that's a wrap for disc golf. fishing in Bronte Creek for rainbow trout, splake, steelhead, and Pacific salmon. At the bottom of this rope climb, we just came down. There's some uh, guys fishing down here, and these are salmon in the water. And you can see some. You probably can't see them, but they're right in the water right there. Um, and they're heading upstream. Allie? Yes. I'm glad you suggested this. That was fun, right? That was fun. That was fun, but a little bit trying. Thank you everyone for coming again to our fifth annual, our fifth annual th family Thanksgiving camping. It's a tradition that's going to go on for years and years. Or, or it could die this year. It could be we don't over know. Right <laughs> so enjoy. This was there. awesome. Thank you, Sue and John. You prepared almost all the food. That was great. And Amy, your charcuterie, and the others, and the beans, and the and their dogs named beans. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Bean. Chili, chili, chili. Yeah, the chili, that was good. Well, the Thanksgiving 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Holy cow, I almost forgot a tour of her site. We're taking everything down right now, so it doesn't look all pretty. It's Nice, big, flat, open site. Has a gravel driveway going in. One picnic table, fire pit, like usual. And we're kind of in an open field area. Cole's notes for Bronte Creek Provincial Park. It's her final trip of the 2022 season. Boo. Yeah, it's a very sad time. It is, it's <clears throat> always a sad time. But on the upside, we can start planning for next season. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We got lots planned. It's going to be an exciting season. So Bronte Creek. It was a, a, a lovely surprise. Better than what I was expecting. Again, I think I've said that a few times this yeah. season. It was better than I expected. We didn't have... Uh, we, we basically picked this park because it was so close to our home. It's, it's yeah, less than an hour figure. away. Uh, it's easy for family and friends <laughs> to come and, and join us. And we weren't expecting to be anything great of a park because, no, let's it's, face it, it's in the, the middle city, of a city. In the city, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got here and uh, the colors were Stunning. full, full colors. Yeah. Uh, the fall colors, just incredible. It was amazing. And the trails, I wasn't expecting. 
I thought there was just one teeny tiny little, you know, trail. Yeah. Just 500 meter trail or something yeah. here. The no. funniest thing is the, the nicest trail in the entire park mm -hmm. that, that I found to be the nicest trail yeah. isn't even on the map. Yeah. It's that the was East weird. Ravine Trail. We went out biking the first day and we got lost. <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't the signage that Cheryl needs to uh, find yep. her way around as she gets lost so easily. Same with Ben on that one. I, could, I couldn't find, <laughs> we were lost. I was the one leading us. And uh, we were very pleasantly surprised. But we ended uh, up in a good spot. So yeah, <laughs> because out. that was a good getting lost. We went along that East Ravine Trail. Um, from the top of the trail, we looked down into the water. We could see the salmon splashing by a beaver dam as they're yep. trying to, as they're trying to get over the dam. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Um, yeah, I think a big part of why we enjoyed this so much is because we kind of had low expectations, yeah. and then we got here and the explosion of color because we're in full autumn colors. That was really nice. And because I love fall so much and the fall colors, this yeah. was a good fall campground to come to. So. <laughs> that being said, as far as uh, a standard campground, comparing it to other campgrounds and uh, uh, the type type of camping we like to do, let's we, say this is the middle of summer. Yeah, it, w it wouldn't have the same effect. No. Um, one thing... Because it uh, didn't have really anywhere that we could kayak. Right. Sure. A necessary thing for us, a 100% necessary thing, is there has to be a water source, a place that we can swim or kayak or paddle. Mm -hmm. And... There isn't anything like that here. So my concern is, is if you're in a tent or something, like we have air conditioning in the trailer, but if you're uh, camping here in a tent um, and then uh, you get super hot, you know, it's over 30 degrees, there's no place to cool off. You can't go in the water. Now, granted, you can go one kilometer out of here and go to Tim Hortons or McDonald's or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's close to town for an anything air conditioned you need. Place. Yeah. Um, the day use area, is huge. There's a lot to do there. Mind you, the store and visitor center were closed for the season, um, but we still got to see the farm animals. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Um, you did the frisbee with the kids. The disc golf. Disc yeah. golf. The uh, swimming pool. Uh, it's been closed for a few seasons now. Looks like Earl Row. They yeah. have something going on. I don't know. So uh, from looking at it, it looks like it's in pretty rough shape. I don't know if they're going to be fixing it up for the 2023 season or if they're just packing it in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, and, and if it is open, it is an extra cost to, to go there. So there's your water. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's other things in the city you could go to. It's not far. Yeah. <coughs> but this is a cool little park because it mm -hmm. has so many activities for the family. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, the uh, the animals that were there. Yeah. Um, and they have a, 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 the kids' fun barn. Yeah, we got lots of stuff to do yeah. there. And then you've got the disc golf. They also have a model airplane flying club, but you have to be a member of that club, but that's within the park. And if they're flying, that's probably uh, pretty cool to go see them flying their model airplanes up mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, lots of activities all the yeah. time. And in the summertime where you get people in period costumes at, the, uh, uh, at that farmhouse, and uh, you can go and talk to them, find out uh, about what life was like in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is pretty cool. We like learning about that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of discovery stuff. So we really like the park. Except the fact that you have to leave the park to go to the day use. You yes. have to hop on the, what do you call it? The QEW. The QEW. I, it, would be, it would be so cool if there was like a big bridge that could join the two together. A pedestrian bridge. That would be oh, awesome. Um, yeah, for cycling or Yeah, just a pedestrian over. bridge so you can get from the uh, day use area to the camping area. Plus a pedestrian mm -hmm. bridge over that ravine would be beautiful, mm -hmm. especially this time of year. Yeah. I'm sure it's quite costly, but uh, yeah. Ontario that's Parks, everything. if you're listening, that's our big suggestion for this park <laughs> so that we don't have to drive out and onto the QEW. Just a minor change. <laughs> yeah, to, to get over to the other side. It would be great to have that. Yeah, yeah. So the park was clean. I like the sites. It's a different kind of campground than what we're used to. It's a lower brush area. Um, but there are some that are in the woods. Yeah, in Woodland, they had some really nice sites there. And every site seems to be flat. Mm -hmm. And every single site here is uh, grass, electric. And they're grass. Most of them are. Yeah. Reminds me of Selkirk, where they had to. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well capped, clean. And there's no vault toilets. No, what you would normally no. have is vault toilets because Just they have the comfort the, stations. They're basically mini comfort stations. Like in Verheron, kind of. Yeah? Well, yeah, you know, the hard buildings with the yeah. 
sink soap, they're tiled, yeah. <clears throat> so, no complaints there. Great. So in terms of a rating though, uh, for overall, it has a ton I of activities, but contain it to just the seat this season or this fall. Mm -hmm. But for the summer too, um, what do you want to do? So, like in the summertime, the, the would views be, wouldn't be nearly as spectacular. We there's spectacular views, because but then of the on color. the other hand, there's more activity happening Absolutely. during the summer too. So you kind of balance it out. Yeah, this is this is no Lake Superior or anything. You're you're in the middle of a city. But as for being in a neighborhood, it's it's a nice park. Yeah, absolutely. If I lived near here, I would definitely have a season pass so I could come in every day. The two leash-free dog trails. Oh yeah, there's a lot of dog walkers. Oh yeah, so it's great stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of comparing it to all the other parks that we go to and stuff. Yes. To give it a rating. Yes. Like uh, seven. Yeah. Seven and a half. Seven. I think a seven. Seven. I think it fits well with a seven. Okay. The big thing is the, the lack of water, <clears throat> mm -hmm. the lack of uh, yeah. you know, being able to paddle, swim, stuff like that. Yeah. But that's it. It's a seven. There it is. There it is. The last review of the season. This is a sad moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, we're ending on sunshine, so that's a good yeah. thing. And by the time you're watching this, uh, you've already started uh, booking yeah, for the 2023 hopefully. season. Hopefully, if not, get on it. Because this should be the end of December right now. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we're yeah. bringing you some nice blue sky, sun, fall colors. Yeah, instead of the dreary white that we're probably all looking at right now. That's right. So, uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots more uh, <laughs> videos coming out uh, that'll lead us up to the next camping season. So we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, stay tuned. Bye for now. Bye.